return to another state which has already preempted any announcement by the Prime Minister on a lockdown. Punjab, lockdown announced yesterday, Manpreet Badal with us. Total cases in Punjab, 132, deaths 5, cured 11. Appreciate your joining us, Manpreet Badal. And I want to cut the chase and come to the key question that today the Prime Minister raised apparently, lives and livelihoods. He said it's important to save lives, but also to ensure livelihoods are protected. How are you going to do that in a state like Punjab with harvest barely a week away, harvest season upon us? How are you going to protect livelihoods while also protecting lives in a lockdown? Thank you, Rajdeep. Uh, and uh, as far as the question is concerned, can I just add something that this is actually truly a world war. You know, the World War One and World War Two, which were fought, they were actually fought by just a dozen or a couple of dozen nations. This is the first time in human history that over 200 countries are actually fighting this war. So uh, Punjab is actually fighting on four fronts. One is to keep the population uh, in some kind of a lockdown or curfew. But at the same time, you know, how do we keep them away from depression? The second front is that how do, how do we uh, make sure that food and money reach, reaches every household in Punjab? The third, your question was that how do we again start the wheels of our economy moving again? And the fourth challenge, which is facing not just Punjab, but the whole nation, is that how do we find a remedy in science and uh, how do we move the frontiers of sure. medicine so that you know, we, we actually come to some uh, solution to this. Uh, there's a saying in Punjabi, which most of your listeners won't understand. Uh, so I'll translate it into English. It's a, being pessimistic is a sin. So while we are going through hell, and I can't resist a quotation from Churchill, which says, if you're going through hell, just carry on. So what the government of Punjab has decided, starting the 15th, uh, Punjab farmers would be allowed to harvest uh, the wheat. Uh, the good news, uh, Rajdeep, is that for the last three years, our go-downs were overflowing with food. We had over two lakh metric tons of food uh, you know, in our go-downs, some in the open, rotting, rotting away. Government of India was telling us that, you know, really there is no demand for food. And ever since this lockdown or a week before lockdown, and especially since the railway traffic has all come to a stand, standstill, uh, there are about 38 to 40 trains of food being evacuated out of Punjab. Uh, so one good thing out of the crisis is that Punjab will be food free because we have our next uh, crop, which is again a bumper crop, coming in. Uh, we have allowed farmers to uh, start harvesting uh, from the 15th. Uh, luckily for Punjab, uh, most harvesting is now 99% mechanical. So you don't have large you know, people or uh, workers in one area mm -hmm. and a large combine harvest can sort it out. Uh, the second problem was that most of this crop then comes into what is known as the mandis. You know, there's a large collection yes. of people and procurement takes place. And this is done in about three weeks. Uh, we have decided, and this is probably the largest operation of food procurement done anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So what we've decided, in, instead of three weeks, we're actually going to do it in 10 weeks. So it's going to be a staggered purchase of wheat. So that is, uh, I don't think, don't think so. That is going to be a problem. No, are you saying? This. Are you saying? Therefore, let me. Just, are you saying that the supply chain will? will be intact because we've seen parts of the country where farmers are finding it difficult to get their produce to the market in the absence of trucking, in the absence of, uh, of migrant labor available to do the work on the fields. I want to understand that. Are you telling me that the Punjab government is confident that what the Prime Minister said, lives and livelihoods both need to be protected, can be done? Rajdeep, you have to understand that we, the food basket of India, we have fine-tuned this operation into an art, you know, and the entire bureaucracy, civil servants, you know, down to the tehsildars, to the thanedars are actually involved in this operation of, you know, collecting food, bagging them, putting them in go-downs, dispatching them, and them at railways. So we have a 70-year experience. You know, our food and supply department is one of the largest departments of the state, you know, and. Uh, so that is not that is not an issue. In fact, as 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 a 
as a minister from Punjab, my next worry is the next crop, which is going to be sometime in June. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Punjab has now become a very big uh, uh, paddy, uh, you know, rice grower. Mm -hmm. and, mo and most of uh, this uh, paddy transplanting is done by migrant labor. So this labor may not be available during during lockdown or immediately post lockdown uh, in the first week of mm -hmm. June. Mm -hmm. And we have come up with a plan B that uh, uh, if not a paddy th this time, because we don't have labor and Punjabis don't know how to transplant rice. Um, so instead of, uh, uh, we might just go in for a larger sowing of cotton crop this year. Mm -hmm. Punjab at one time was very big in cotton mm -hmm. until uh, this MSP forced us to go, go into rice or maybe even maize. Um, but as far as agriculture is concerned, uh, Punjab is confident uh, we'll be able to feed India. Uh, we will be able to do our national duty. Uh, but Rajdeep, uh, my, uh, my, uh, as finance minister, my worries are not food procurement and uh, you know just getting these supplies to them. Uh, my worry is that you know in the last, uh, and Punjab went in for a, a curfew much before uh, 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 before the rest of the country, mm -hmm. because uh, most of your uh, maybe viewers would not realize, but Punjab has a very large uh, uh, immigrant population. Uh, and uh, most of them are actually living in the first world, which are now the hotspots. Mm -hmm. And in fact, first cases also came uh, from uh, the diaspora, Punjabi diaspora would come back visiting families. Yes. Um, so uh, um, our problem now is somehow, uh, you know, in, because we're in a curfew state, not a single liter of petrol has been sold. There are no taxes coming from passenger tax, stamp and registrations, GST, uh, liquor and so on and so forth. So with not a single rupee coming in uh, into the state exchequer, then how are we going to run the state uh, beyond the first quarter? You know, we can front uh, load our borrowings and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I think uh, India, and I'm not talking about Punjab only, India would need two kind of doctors. One, the doctors who will take care of the medical side of it. But then the second kind of doctors are who will now take care of the economic crisis which is going to follow, which mm -hmm. is impending. And I would not want India to be to get into some kind of a debt trap because that will create a biggest uh, you right. know, uh, situation, an even bigger situation than the coronavirus. And I would be very happy if we can open up quickly, we can reap the uh, benefits of the early bird. And I would be delighted, Rajdeep, if India can actually stand out, not only manage this crisis, but also help other countries with the Let vaccine and med medication, because if we can achieve that, if India can, you know, if India can, mm -hmm. then believe me, post Corona, we would not need to send delegations abroad telling them about ease of doing business in India or even, uh, uh, you know, uh, I telling think them. Uh Manpreet, let me ask you one final question because the Prime Minister in his, in his meeting today with Chief Minister said lockdown with riders and one of the riders we are told is that in some way free up certain areas for economic activity to take place. Do you think that's practical on the ground? Do you think it's practical to be able to create certain zones where some measure of economic activity, MSME activity, small industries can actually start working or are we simply... Is that impractical? No, there are some districts uh, which have had no cases. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously it has to be a staggered approach from essential supplies going on all the way up to exports. Um, but you have to balance the two, Rajdeep. Uh, you know, with the temperatures going over 40 degrees in the next 10 days. Right. Uh, so far, luckily, we are still uh, under 30 in Punjab. But with uh, in the next uh, whatever ten days, it'll be difficult to actually keep people in as well. Uh, luckily for us, luckily for us, Rajdeep, in Punjab we have this cultural tradition of uh, langar and you know feeding people and giving away mm -hmm. because we've had a very turbulent history from uh, the invasion of the Greeks to the British. Let's... So uh, we will manage somehow, but. No I, have no, I have no doubt that the Punjabi spirit will win in the end. But I just want to ask you one final question. How are you going to put cash? You're saying that government, state governments, you just mentioned a little while ago, are starved of cash. 
How are you going to put cash in the hands of those who need it most at a time like this? There are people living on the margins today. How are you going to put cash in the hands of those in Punjab today who need it most? Well, uh, Rajdeep, we have a very robust uh, you know, social security system in Punjab uh, in terms of uh, these old age pensions. And uh, Chief Minister has allowed uh, uh, you know, the, the labor funds to be given. Uh, and we've, we've also uh, front-loading these uh, pensions and all, mm -hmm. you know, giving two, three months uh, pensions in advance. Uh, plus uh, distribution of food grains and so on and so forth. But, you know, there is a lot of uh, charity and philanthropy going on, on in Punjab, from the Gurdwaras down to the NGOs. So uh, the, the real problem is not, you know, people having some cash or having food, but, the, but having, you know, some meaningful uh, economic activity to start in Punjab. You know, we had fixed our finances, we had fixed our economy in the last three years under Captain Amarinder Singh Ji. Uh, it's just a shame that just as we were on the cusp of, uh, you know, taking off uh, this, uh, you know, let me, act has forced us actually to the, in the back foot again. Let me leave it there. I'm going to get all you finance ministers together in a round table one of these days to try and find out what is that package that can be delivered that can in a way act as a stimulus for the economy. But I appreciate your joining me, Manpreet Badal. Thank you very much for joining Thank me here this evening on the news today. Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.